Hello, how is it going? This is Fake Hero coming at you once again. I opened up Legends of Matera today uh, without realizing or checking my quests. I have the quest for the Arachnophilia, which is to attack with 15 spiders. It actually gave me an idea for a video, and that is to talk about the Endure Spiders uh, deck list. It's pretty popular at the moment. It's popping up. It's very powerful. I think it may be too powerful for what a deck like it is. It's kind of a mid range deck, runs the spiders, runs those who endure, hence the name, uh, cards Powerhouse, and yeah, it's just really strong. Like, I think its ability to take on aggro decks and control decks is really ridiculous. But let's actually head over to Mobilitics quickly and we'll discuss the deck further. So here we are over on Mobilitics. This is the deck list right here. Enjoy and Spiders, it comes under the S tier. Yes, I do believe this deck is very powerful and if piloted correctly, you can find yourself some easy wins. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the cards here we're running most of the spider package if you can see most of the cards here we also have hapless aristocrat as well as broad awakening that did get buffed by buffed it got reduced in mana you know all your standard spider cards are here and the ability to fight for the board is very powerful some of the more interesting cards is uh thresh and trinomia thresh is pretty powerful mid-range card if you can find it to level up you're going to find a lot of value from it and sometimes you will pull out a trinomia and you will slap them in the face so you'll see an example in the game coming up very shortly other than that, we run the Fragile side of things so we can play which is what the deck's name behind. They Who Endure, very strong mid-range card. What kind of what turns this deck from a mid-range, uh, from an aggressive deck into more of a mid-range deck? This card is bonkers. I'm surprised it's it's that easy to level it up and go to a high attack, high HP minion that you can just straight up end the game. And if you, for whatever reason, are versing some sort of control deck, uh, one copy of Atrocity, sometimes you play They Who Endure, sometimes you just Atrocity and blow them up in the face. Uh, on the top end here, quickly, the Ruination is just a ridiculous card and it just gives you the ability to pretty much sometimes win a game on the spot. Uh, so this deck, pretty much, you can play it aggressively, you can play it controlly. There's so many ways of piling in this deck. It's an amazing deck. Let's have a quick look at what they discuss here in the deck overview. I haven't personally seen this yet, but the general info would be that this deck is great for players who like to have answers to flexibility. I definitely agreed with that. I think as I learn the game, learn the decks, I'm starting to understand them more and more. I'm learning. Uh, flexibility, anyway, with card draw removal and a strong suit of followers, you can pivot on any angle that you need to. Yes, correct. I feel like you can can definitely part this deck in many different ways which i think it rewards the understanding player a lot more how to play this deck doesn't play very fast i semi i semi disagree i think with the right opening hand you can play faster and you'll see that in an example i had against the burn aggro list actually i think this deck is it still runs spiders you still have the ability to punch them in the face and if you have the right hand i think you can go ahead and do that your primary objective is to fight for the board and make favorable trades until you can stick a large they who endure. Correct, they who endure pretty much is the game changer. Like that's such a ridiculously bonkers card and making favorable trades is easy and then getting withering whales behind it is also very easy. Against hard aggro decks like burn, aggro you want to make sure you get a vile feast and withering whales in order to deal with the low health high damage followers like legion saboteur. Um, Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be slightly off meta here and say that I don't necessarily agree with that. We will show you an example of a, a deck I versed where we don't find Withering Whale or a Vile Feast in the opening hand or throughout the game. We do find a Vile Feast uh, actually a few turns in, but I think if you have the right opening hand with like at least uh, uh, with an Elise or your Crawling Sensations and uh, even Omen Hawk Hapless Service Track. Ha a hapless aristocrat i keep the entire hand if it's all low cost cards i keep the entire hand so don't try and fish fish for your withering whale and throw back something like a like a hand that looks like a least hapless aristocrat and two crawling sensations and you can maybe argue about throwing back one crawling sensation but if you know exactly what the list is that they're probably playing i think against a standard burn aggro deck that's a real powerful hand Against strong mid-range decks, a strong Ruination is crucial to get off, but you'll have to play around Deny. Yeah, so if they're playing Irony R, just be careful with the Ruination. Like, try and play it when you can, if it's the right opportunity, but if you if it gets denied and you die the next turn, probably not the best time to play it. And that's excellent. I think this deck's really powerful. Let's go look at these couple games here. The first game's against Burn Aggro, and you'll see the examples I just spoke about a moment ago, where with the right opening hand, you can actually blow them out. 
just as fast as they attempt to do it to yourself. Enjoy the video guys. Uh, please, uh, if you can leave a comment, uh, just looking for any feedback, just any little, any little, anything little, anything big, I will take any uh, criticism that's needed. Thank you guys. Ah, uh, burn aggro. This is probably not a bad matchup for us. I mean, if we find any amount of Vile Feast or Withering Whale, the wraps in this game is super quick. Even like fighting, fighting for the board early, like we can ironically like contest the board heavily, almost even be the aggressor against the aggro decks with the right opening hand. I think a hand like Double Coin Sensation, Hapless Fist, Aristocrat, Elise, uh, it just seems really powerful. We're missing the Vile Feast, but I don't think I want to throw back two coin sensations against an aggressive deck. And he's not, um... It's a good, this is a really good chump blocker. And he's obviously not playing the variant that runs Ezreal. So he's pretty much just straight up aggro. And probably has like a certain X amount of decimates to play over the hand. We're actually in a super good spot here. Uh, we 100% will swing with the Elise. If he absorbs it with any trades, we still get a spider, it just it makes a lot of sense. I'm still very certain we swing. And it also causes him on his following turn to have to slow play uh, something, which I can frost by if needed. Really good opening hand versus the aggressive decks. Uh, but uh, against other matchups, you probably throw back most of that stuff, except for Elise. Elise is just all around very strong. Um, no harm done. Playing Ice Veil Archer. Getting onto the board, causing him to not swing. I guess the question is how important is it taking 2 damage to the face? He does run cards that can deal 1 damage. But if I get them out of his hand, I think it's fine. I think we just keep trying to get onto the board. I'll actually frostbite the uh, fearsome. Could have frostbited the legion rear guard, but I'm not too, not too fast about that. It's unlikely that he swings. If we can stop him from even attacking, like that's honestly a win in itself. I, I think we can him. swing like this. And if he decides to block with anything, it should be good. It activates my calling sensations too, which I kind of want to like use. Without calling sensations in hand, I'm pretty sure you don't you don't block you don't swing here. And chip damage is relevant. And buffing they who endure. Now his um fearsome units can make damage. We have a royal nation though, so I'm probably gonna float some mana. I'm just wondering if I should be playing my next coin sensation. How many blockers do I really want? Like, we know a deck. We, we know exactly what deck he's playing now. As we start to learn the meta, we know what they're playing. The only thing that might catch me is the cards that aren't traditionally run in lists. So if he's running anything from Piltover, like Twin Sparks, so that's four mana. It's, it's unlikely that they run cards like that. I think the cards Twin Sparks. Uh, Vile Feast, super good find. We have enough mana to play Ruination next turn if we need to. We could also just find a board buff. Um. Yeah. 
We don't get the spider, but I think that's okay. This is a punish for playing double crawling association, filling the board. Um, but the spider's truly irrelevant in this position. We are super healthy and this getting rid of saving two damage, gaining one. Yeah, he's 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 in a rough spot. He's already at that point where he hopes to this top deck stuff. So it does semi put me on a bit of a clock here. Now I might consider trying to look for the aggressive players. I'd be shocked if he takes all his damage to the face. <laughs> Overwhelms the card. I don't feel threatened enough by his board to play Rebel Nation. I'm not going to blow up my own board. What I can do is probably get um, the, one of the Elise down so I can uh, evolve them, level them up. I'll try I could just honestly Rebel Nation and then play Dehu and Dua and just slap him next turn. The only thing, that means I'm just not taking as much damage. Hmm. You know what? I don't want to take two damage here. I don't want him to activate anything from Jinx. This buys me so much more time if I just fill nation. It buys me a lot of time. The only problem is, is that if he has another couple of things in his hand. Like, I can... Straight up in the game very shortly. I guess I'll just play the Elise. I don't bite. Makes me wonder how strong, honestly, aggro decks are. Ones that are just purely aggressive. When I'm like, the spiders isn't even the true game plan, but we can have hands that allow us to play more aggressively. But if, you know, if things don't turn out well, or at least we have an actual late game uh, strategy that can help us out quite a lot, like they, those who endure. I think aggressive decks aren't gonna look the same come the future. It may also just be because of um, how they have to be played. I feel like playing aggressive decks in this is super hard. And uh, playing uh, mid range decks is kind of easy. Like Endure Spiders is probably more of a mid range deck than uh, aggressive deck. Or even control deck. Mid range, because pretty much they who endure is a big part of the deck, and that's definitely a mid range minion. You <clears throat> can grab a drink. Playing. I think Withering Whale is too heavy against this deck, and I don't think there's good targets for it. You never complain about having a Vile Feast in situations. Hapless Aristocrat would be a really good to find. I maybe could have considered putting back the Aiva Rosian Century. At the same time, I want to guarantee something to play. 
coming into my turn two. I don't think they run many uh, level uh, one mana minions. I don't even think they run one mana minions. Um, it just makes sense. There's nothing else to do. We'll use our mana to play the sentry. And he'll play this. Okay, so I know what he's running. He's running an annoying deck. I think this one might have uh, an advantage against us for sure. I probably should consider, um, have considered Vile Feasting the Curse Keeper. I may consider it. It's tough to say because uh, he can get a lot of value from this. Like if he puts down Callisto or something. I think that's 4 mana Callisto actually. Even Lucian. The Undying. We should probably play the Hawk. It allows us to play, um... I could also play Frenzy Skira and then come come around, swing around as a Broad Awakening. It's a slow spell. Uh, I feel like we want to play as aggressive as possible. We miss out on a turn of buffs, but to come into a more powerful turn and to negate some damage, I think the Skira... I think the Skira is the right play. Because his deck is also like a mid-range deck, probably more on the aggressive side. So his deck will play it a little bit more faster than we will, and that's a problem. So we're going to have to try and match his tempo. And then if that happens, our, our slower plays will be more powerful. Uh, we're we're going to... Yeah, we're definitely going to play Broad Awakening. I think it's just correct. I don't know... Um, if he's running these guys, he may be running some removal. So, more of a reason to get in some chip damage now. And you can never hurt getting multiple means into the field. We're buffing those who are who endure. And we're actually going to curve out into Thresh, so we can start to pull out any form of any form of removal that he has, and then it makes the Thresh more powerful. This was inevitable. I expected this very much. Uh, question is, he can block. If I just if I throw everything out there like this, I assume he uses his three three to block this, and he blocks one of the two twos. I wonder if it's worth. I think we still I think we still swing here the other option is to not swing with my spiders and no I'm gonna do it because then it makes it tougher for him to swing with his 4-4 uh, four -four. he'll need to find some other resources plus if I'm killing any minions earlier there's less buffs to go onto his uh, Lucian and Callista. Yeah, I need to beat him before he starts doing crazy stuff with these guys. Him not being able to block is super relevant though. Like we have to punish him for playing, making those slow plays when we can. So we, I don't think he opened attacks here. He'll decide to play something. I'll most likely will play uh, Thresh. Um, okay. Play Thresh. Um, I'll just take the one ones to the face. Yeah, it's super hard for him to argue swinging with the 4 2. He's doing it anyway. What I'm thinking is that maybe he's uh he's gonna buff this. That's fine. What buffs does he even have? He is Demacia. They're probably running Repos or Barriers. At least I can get some card draw here. He obviously has a play. If it's any, if it's a fast spell that gives him just barrier, um Vile Feast becomes super valuable. Yeah, okay. 
This is that's fine. I think that's fine. This works out really well for us then. He didn't even swing with his ephemeral. What's that all about? Does he plan on following up with another minion? Okay, this makes sense. Um, we're just gonna. S <laughs> um, okay. The Thresh is a game changer leveling up. We're gonna go into the board. Um, I'm actually gonna open attack here 100%. I wanna rip that blister down. And there's no reason not to swing with these guys as well, correct? We're actually gonna pull out, hopefully, Trinomir. That's the game of the game. Oh, -ho! that's big. He might just be dead here. Power of mid range decks. Obnoxious. He's gonna search for answers. Okay. Doesn't change much. Yeah, Thresh actually already leveled up. This is a fucking blowout. Holy shit. <laughs> that was like, just everything went perfectly then. I think we made some good moves in that game. You could also argue that he didn't have the best hand. I felt like it was pretty strong. Honestly, like I feel like maybe he didn't have the right answers, but he had a good hand. He had a hand that he would have wanted if I was in his position. Like Curse Keeper, landing your Curse Reapers onto it and stuff. Like that all sounds like how the deck should run. Leveling up Callista. Uh, Endure Spiders, which is clearly uh, stronger there. Wow. Obviously we pulled Trindamir. That was a load of BM, but uh, the chances were there.